Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to look at plant tissues. Um, specifically I'm going to show you how to identify them, how to make it really easy to study for exams because I know tissues all look the same and especially plant tissues it's so hard to tell the difference and there's so much to remember. I'm going to make it really easy. I'm also going to break down their functions so that you know what they do. And finally, I'm also going to show you what they look like under a microscope so that you know in an exam what it looks like in a diagram form or in a micrograph. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on because I post life sciences content for grades 10 to 12. All right, now let's just quickly break down the plant tissues and then I'm going to go into more details. So tissues come in two forms. They either come as a meristematic tissue, which is tissue that is temporary um, and doesn't hang around for very long in a plant. It's where growing happens, whereas permanent tissue is, as the name suggests, lasts longer. And technically meristematic tissue becomes permanent tissue over time. And that particular permanent tissue can be things like parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, and I'm going to go through all of those soon now, as well as the vascular tissues, which is xylem and phloem. So let's begin with looking at the Mary stems. Now the Mary stems are tissue that grow and they differentiate into any kind of tissue. And we find them in two major regions. We find them at the tips of a shoot or the tip of the root, which is what we call apical Mary stems. And then the second location is lateral, which means we actually find it here in the stem and it is responsible for a slightly different kind of growth. And if we look over on to the side here, apical meristems or the meristems we find at the tip, they cause primary growth and they cause the lengthening of the plant. And so what that means is the apical meristems are responsible for plants growing up towards the sun, but also the roots growing down towards water and soil. Now the lateral meristems, on the other hand, they are there for secondary growth and they occur in something called the cambium. When we move on to the next section, when we do plant organs, I'll explain what plant cambium is, but essentially it's this. Um, when you want to make a plant, like a tree or even just a shrub or a bush, you want its stems to become thicker, the cambium is a ring of tissue that allows you to grow in width. In other words, one year, maybe the width of your stem is this size, but due to lateral Mary stems, two or three years later, it could be this wide. And that is because the lateral Mary stems have grown in thickness. The second thing it also does is it provides bark on trees. And that does make sense because every time you get a little bit wider, you know, like the width of your stem increases, you're going to have to add on a new layer of bark. Now we move on to the epidermis, which is the first of our permanent tissues. Now the epidermis um, in this picture is um, grouped together with a lot of other cells and tissues. So I just want to point it out if we have a look here. If we look right at the surface, we see there is a label here that says cuticle. And then it says upper epidermis, and you've actually got a lower epidermis and then a, a lower cuticle down here. And so what I'm going to talk about is those first two, the cuticle and the upper epidermis. So essentially the point of any epidermis is protection. Okay, so we're trying to protect everything that is below it. Um, we also want to make sure that all the tissues that are sitting underneath it, which is basically everything down here in this curly bracket where it says mesophyll, we want to make sure that those cells can do their job. And so the point of specialized epidermal cells comes into play here. Now, what is the point of the epidermis and what is near it or on it that helps it do its job? Well, we've got two things here. First of all, when it comes to the cuticle, which is this structure over here, and if you can't see what it is, it is actually the see-through layer that's sitting on the top of a plant. A waxy cuticle is literally made out of wax and it prevents water loss. The other thing that's really important about the actual epidermis itself, which is this middle layer over here, I'm just going to color in one of the cells in black. You can see that is an epidermal cell, this whole thing. 
Um, you'll notice there's only one cell layer thick. There is one next to each other. So here is another one next to it, and there's another one. But you'll notice there aren't any underneath it. There are other cells underneath it. And the reason for that is you want to be able to get as much sunlight moving from the waxy cuticle down through the epidermis, and you want to get it into these other underlying layers. And so you want it to be transparent. And that is also the waxy cuticle being transparent, allowing for sunlight to penetrate into the lower tissues. Now, some of these epidermal tissues are specialized. For example, if we look at the lower part of this diagram where it says stoma and guard cell, those are specialized cells that I'm going to quickly point out called the stomata. Now, in preparing for your tests or exams, you may be asked to draw a picture like this, draw any of the cells and label them. This particular diagram is putting many tissues together, but you are going to have to learn this diagram at some point because it comes up in the plant organs section, which is after plant tissues. Now, as I mentioned, you get specialized epidermis uh, tissue, and in particular, we are looking at the stomata. The stomata are the little openings um, that are on the underside of the leaf, and what you can see here is what we call a guard cell. Um, and there are two, and literally, they guard the openings of your plant, and they make sure that certain substances can come in and certain substances can come out, and they do that by using their vacuole, and basically, their vacuole fills with water or cell sap, um, or it empties, and that's what opens and closes the stoma, or this opening in the middle. You'll see here is the stoma open, and here is the stoma closed. By the way, the word stoma should not be confused with the word stroma, uh, S-T-R-O-M-A. The stroma is the filling inside of a chloroplast. Now, the final specialized epidermal tissue is the root hair cell. You will find these cells growing on the surface of the roots. Now, you can't actually see these. These are microscopic. And as you can see, I mean, this is an example. There's the size of the soil particle and there's the size of the root hair. It's very, very, very small. You can't actually see these. But you'll see that it's got this really long, elongated um, structure to it. And in actual fact, what it's doing is it's pushing it's um, vacuole down into the elongated part. So you can actually see here is a normal size vacuole alongside. So there it is if I just do a little outline. Whereas this particular one goes all the way down and then it comes all the way around. You can see it's very, very large. And so what they've done is they've elongated their vacuole down so that they can make this long root hair. Now, why do we do this? Well, root hair cells have two functions. Um, the reason that they have these two functions is to improve the surface area of the plant because you want to absorb as much nutrients from the soil as possible. And the second thing is you want a nice large vacuole, not just to help with the root hair, but to help store the water or the minerals that are actually coming in. And then once they're in the plant, then you can determine where they go. We're now going to move on to the next kind of permanent tissue, which is our ground tissues, starting with parenchyma or parenchyma, depending on how your teacher says it. And these are the most abundant tissues in plants. We um, see three different kinds, and I'm going to go through how to identify them and their functions. Now, starting off with parenchyma, um, looking at parenchyma, we need to be able to see it in a diagram and in a micrograph. And we need to look for two things when we identify it. The first thing is is it must have a thin cell wall, which we can actually see very clearly in the micrograph over here. It's a very thin cell wall. And also we're looking for intercellular air spaces, which again, you can actually see in the micrograph really clearly. It's these little spaces in between. And if I color them in, there is an intercellular air space, there's another, and there's another. Um, if we look at the diagram, often what you see is this kind of picture over here. Um, it looks like they're irregularly shaped, sort of round, uh, rectangular shaped um, cells. And it links back to their purpose, their shape. Remember, shape equals function. And if we look at their functions, it actually makes sense why they look the way they do. They are what we call the packaging tissue, which means that they give the body like sponginess and softness and flexibility. Um, and so being these like circular shapes does that and having spaces in between them 
makes them more spongy. They're also where we store things. You'll notice they look quite empty. I mean, if you look at the micrograph, there's nothing really inside of here, and that's because they need a lot of space to store stuff. Now, the intercellular air spaces allow for gaseous exchange because it's where gases can can literally exchange in that empty space. And it also allows for meiosis because, again, you need an empty space for water to move through. And so that's what parenchyma or parenchyma does for plants. Now, a special mention for parenchyma that has chloroplasts in it, because I want to point out regular parenchyma doesn't have any chloroplasts in it, but a special mention for parenchyma who does, we call them chlorenchyma. And literally, they've changed their name because they're normal parenchyma, but now they've got chloroplasts inside of them, which means they can photosynthesize. And this often is the uh, parenchyma you can see on the surface of a stem. It's what makes the stem green and, and fleshy. The next tissue is cholenchyma. And um, cholenchyma sometimes is confused with parenchyma because they look very, very similar. Let me show you how to tell the difference between them. So when we are trying to identify them, we're looking for two things. Number one, we're going to look for these thickened corners. And if you have a look down at this micrograph, you can see here the corners are unevenly thickened. In other words, if you even compare it to this one over here, that's a very, very, very thick corner. Now, other than the thickened corners, you'll also notice that the corners are definitely unevenly thickened. You'll notice that one side of the um, cell will be really, really thin, and then maybe another side of the cell will be much, much thinner. So you're looking for that uneven look. Um, and that's pretty much the easiest way to identify them. And if you look at our diagram at the top here, if they gave this to you in an exam, what you're looking for, and you can see it quite clearly here, is um, it seems as though the cell wall doesn't sit perfectly around um, the cytoplasm in the center. And it's because it's so unevenly thickened. So you're looking for that unevenness around the cytoplasm on the inside. Now, this thickness uh, has a function, because remember, shape is function. And so if we look at our functions in cholenchyma, we can see a couple of things. One, we can see that it provides support and strength. Now, cholenchyma is able to do this because its walls have been thickened with cellulose and pectin. Um, now, these walls are thicker, but they still have flexibility. So it means that we can still have like soft, bendy green stems. The stems haven't made the transition into a woody stem just yet. And most importantly, they are still green and they'll be able to photosynthesize, which means that cholenchyma does have um, chloroplasts in it as well. Our final ground tissue is going to be our sclerenchyma. Now, sclerenchyma is the thickest of the tissues. Sometimes, again, this one is a little bit confused with cholenchyma, but you've got to look out for one main important detail, and that is when we are trying to identify them, they have evenly thickened walls. And if you look alongside here at our uh, micrograph, you can see that the walls are much more evenly thickened all the way around. You'll notice that it's not like slightly thinner on one side and then slightly thicker on the other, as we saw in cholenchyma. It's evenly thickened. It's even more clearly seen in the diagram here, where the thickened walls make more of like a geometric and consistent or uniform pattern. Now, sclerenchyma's functions are divided into two, depending on where you find them. The main function of sclerenchyma is to provide rigidity and strength, which means that you want to keep things upright and stable. We find this in in a lot of our roots and our stems and our branches, and this is where we find wood. And sclerenchyma is actually divided into two. If it is a sclerenchyma that's a fiber, we are going to see it in wood and bark of a tree. And that's what you can see alongside it. These are what our fibers look like when you cut them in half, and you can see on the inside. Sclerids, on the other hand, are another kind of sclerenchyma. And these sclerids are found in nuts or stone fruit, so the shell of a nut or the pit of a stone fruit on the center and they look a little bit like the one that we have alongside but if I were to sketch it for you essentially the main difference if we draw them is sitting on the inside if that is the outside of the cell wall it seems like they have these like pinched in centers that have these like little arms that stick out and um 
they seem to look like their cytoplasm has like fallen in on itself. Like it doesn't have a cell wall or a cell membrane anymore. And the reason for that is sclerenchyma out of all the uh, ground tissues is dead. All the other tissues are living. Sclerenchyma most importantly is non-living or should I say it's rather dead. It was alive and now it has died. Now let's move into the final set of tissues, which is the vascular tissues. These are the transporting tissues that we see in plants, and they are very specialized in their structure, and they are xylem and phloem. Now let's run through xylem first of all. You may be familiar with xylem. You may have learned it in previous grades. It transports water, and it's got a very specific structure. Uh, if we focus in on the main structure points of xylem, it has elongated cells, which means they're like long and thin. A large lumen literally means that the hole or the opening is quite um, large. In other words, it's quite big. So that's a large lumen versus a smaller lumen. They're dead and empty. Um, and so there's nothing inside of them. There is no cytoplasm. There is no organelles. And that would get in the way of transporting water. Their cell walls are thickened with lignin. And they do that because of the water pressure. The water is really like strong. So it pushes up against the wall of the xylem. And you need to keep it um, stable. And lastly, uh, they have pits for lateral water movement. And if you have a look alongside on the diagram, you can actually see some of the pits, um, which are these little openings, and they've actually um, labeled them on the diagram as well. Those are the pits, and that allows for lateral water movement, so you can move from one xylem vessel to the next. So the overall function of xylem is simply to transport water and minerals in one direction. This is important, only in one, from the, sh from the roots to the shoots. And uh, xylem vessels can come in two different structures. Um, basically, Xylem comes in two different shapes, if you will, and we call them either vessels or tracheids. Vessels are round and elongated, whereas tracheids are spindle. And what spindle means is that they sort of like taper off at the end. And so if I were to draw that for you so you can see what I mean, uh, a vessel would be like a round shape like that, like a long tube, right, like a cylinder, whereas a tracheid would um, be long as well, but the ends kind of go pinch in. They like taper off like that. So that's a slight difference between the two. Um, so that's why I call them round or spindle. And then the way they are arranged. So here they say end to end, which is what our vessels are. So what that means is, is that wherever one vessel ends, another one is stacked on top of it like that. Whereas overlapped, it means that the tracheids, the nature of their shape, where it's pointy at the end, it means they actually need to be overlapped. So they sort of like sit like this on top of each other. So they overlap. And that's how you can tell the difference between the two. Now let's look on to phloem, which is like the sister to xylem. And they do have a lot in common in, in terms of their physical appearance, but there are some very defining structural things that I want you to look out for. Something that phloem does share with xylem is that it is also arranged end to end, so it's stacked on top of each other. And you can see that um, quite nicely, actually, alongside here. You can see the cells stacked on top of each other. So here is one stack and here is the next. And so those are stacked onto each other. And that's what it means to be overlapped. But then they have this structure which makes them very unique, which is this structure over here called the sieve plate. The purpose of the sieve plate, like any sieve, is to filter out, uh, make sure that if there's any like large pieces of sugar that it is flattened out and so that it can move more freely. Because it can get it can get quite like goopy and sugary like syrup so you want to keep it flowing quite well and the last thing which isn't in this diagram here but alongside um phloem cells they have companion cells which are essentially uh, cells uh, sitting alongside um these are just regular like parenchyma cells they're not necessarily um, any companion cells but they could technically be compar uh, companion cells as well perhaps but essentially what they do is these um, companion cells sit alongside our phloem cells and they provide phloem with all the nutrients it needs to survive, all of the mitochondria and energy. Because you don't want any other organelles in the way. You want to keep the phloem empty, so you don't want any organelles there. So you put it in a little companion. Now, as to the functions of 
our phloem. When we speak about the function of phloem, I think we already know it transports sugars. And it's a two-way movement, which means that sugars are going to go from the bottom up, so from the roots to the shoots. But they must also be able to go from the leaves, where they're ultimately made, down to the roots to be stored later. So that's also another defining difference between xylem and phloem is the movement of substances. And that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you are subscribed and your notifications are turned on. I'm constantly growing the grade 10 playlist, so keep checking back. And that's why you need the notifications to make sure you get the newest content every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon with many more plant videos as well as other grade 10 topics. Bye.